Well, it finally seems like we're getting all of our stuff together. We're getting videos done once a week, and I still have time to be able to do all of my college work. You know what? Maybe it's time to take a break. You know, maybe I'll try this new game called Stardew Valley. I've heard a lot of great things about it. So, let's try it. Hello? Dude, it's been three weeks and we haven't posted a video. What have you been doing? Um... Parsnips? What? I'm sorry, man. I just, I've just been playing this addictive game called... Stardew Valley? Yeah. How did you know? Um... I put my life savings into potatoes. But, um... Never mind. Look. We need to get a video out. Fast. Um... Oh, what if we take one of the Zombie Month videos and do that? But we trashed Zombie Month, remember? Wait one moment. Alright, where are you? Come on, you. Ah! Alright, let's see. Um. Oh! How about. The top 10 zombies in non-horror games. Halo Combat Evolved, The Flood. Now technically these are parasitic aliens that are taking over dead people, but these still count as zombies. I'm not very familiar with the Halo franchise, but these things are still pretty freaking scary even for our first person shooter. Halo did a lot of things right, and having the Flood in an uh, action game like Halo really mixes things up. So good one, Bungie. You added zombies to the most generic uh, first-person shooter game. Way to go! Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Zombie Frill. I personally love this game. There's nothing better than playing a game of Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Look at the Australian view! Look at all the memorable characters! Look at even all the cute enemy- HOLY GOD THAT THING'S DEAD! Yes, yeah, Zombie Frills actually gave me quite a shock when I first saw them because this game wouldn't say, Hey look, there's zombies in it. Bleh. But I think what's funny about these things is that it isn't just like zombie zombies. These are zombie frills. Frills are these little lizard guys that stick out their tongue at you when you're a bit of a distance away. They're kind of silly to begin with. So having an entire enemy that's just an undead version of this guy, it's kind of cute. And this is why it's on my number nine. Simpsons Hit and Run Zombies. Okay, technically these guys are probably the most boring of generic zombies ever. But it's in the Simpsons realm, so Simpsons zombies are already funny, and you get to run these guys over. That's hilarious. Simpsons and run zombies, you're on number eight, because I get to run you guys over. And it doesn't even go into a bloody mess. It's just like hitting a person in real life. It's kind of funny. Don't quote me on that. Please don't run over people. We've already been sued enough as it is. Minecraft. Zombie children. Do you know what's not scary? Minecraft. Minecraft is not scary. You know, minus the times where it does scare you. But do you know what else is not scary? Zombies. They're not scary. They're just green little blue guys with purple shorts. They're like a very miniature Hulk with blue shirts. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with this. The point was is that zombies in Minecraft aren't scary, and that's one of the things why I like Minecraft. It's not scary. Even zombie pigmen, who originally were on the list. I mean, if you hit one, sure, you got a swarm of them now trying to attack you, but nevertheless, they're still not that scary. But you know what is scary? Zombie children. Now you think, oh, look at it, he's just a little cutie by- Oh my god, you're fast! Oh, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me! Dead. These things are ungodly fast, and it's scary because the entire game is a pretty slow pace as it is, and then you have an enemy that runs five times faster than you and slowly drains your health, you kind of start running in fear. 
And this is why zombie children in Minecraft are on number seven on my list. Skyrim Draggards. Yes, these undead guys. There's nothing really special about them other than the fact that they're ancient Nord zombies. I mean, there's nothing very special to them. If anything, in the game, they're just kind of a nuisance. But it's still kind of fun to beat their butts. And at times, if you're facing one of the kings, they do give you a bit of a challenge. They just kind of add to the atmosphere of Skyrim, which, that I like. But do you want even better than one version of Bethesda zombies? Fallout Ghouls. Yes, these are the better version of Bethesda Zombies. So yes, technically when it came to the 3D games, Bethesda just took their draggards and put them in the Fallout universe. Gave them close. But that's not the reason why they're better. In Fallout, the ghouls actually are people. They're just poorly deformed people. And there's even racial prejudice against these people. And if you talk to any of them, they're really, really nice. I especially like Gob in Moriarty's bar. He's very, very nice, and I kind of liked ghouls after that. I kind of hang around them every time I play Fallout 3. So why would anybody want to hurt these teddy bears? They're just soft, decaying, rotting teddy bears. They're better than anything else in this game. Holy smokes a juggernaut! Half-Life. Do you know what's not scary? Zombies. They weren't scary in the first game, and they aren't scary in the second game. But do you know what is scary in the second game? Fast zombies. Holy freaking crap, these things. They come from the fast M. Geiger aliens. Wait, that's not what they are? Headhuggers? Crab meat? I don't know, these these things are weird. They're, they're chicken with crab legs. I don't know what to call them. The point is, is that they come from fast versions of these enemies, which these enemies aren't scary to begin with. But make them fast, and there's something to worry about. Then put them on a dead person and make them ten times faster, their body ten times more decaying, and the fact that if you actually hit the head off of a fast zombie that you can see their original screaming decaying head, these things are scary. And the funny thing is, Half-Life in general is not a scary game, but it adds tension. And that's one of the reasons why the fast zombies in Half-Life are number four on my list. Uncharted. Look at me, it's Indiana Croft. I'm going in my Tomb Raiders of the Lost Ark. See what I did there? Yes, Uncharted isn't the most original of game plots, but so is Luigi's Mansion, and I also love that game. Uncharted was the Tomb Raider, the Tomb Raider of the late 2000s that we didn't get until the late re reboot. It was fun finding treasure in this game, and it was fun going through all the gunning and shootouts. So when you see zombies in the, this game near the end, holy crap is it freaking scary. And the worst part is, you can't even play the game the same way once you find these guys. Most of the game, you're kind of just ducking and covering. You know, suck on that, Gears of War. You're just kind of ducking and shooting your enemies. Nothing too special. But then as soon as the zombies come, you have to completely change your playing style. You see, these guys are fast. And not only are they fast, they're fast and they swarm. Which means if you decide to cover to shoot, you're going to find yourself overcumbered with zombies very, very quickly. Which means instead of hiding and shooting like you've been doing for the most part of the game, you're now running, screaming for your life, and on occasion shooting. This is one of the reasons why it's on our list. They completely change up the gameplay by adding a single enemy that acts differently. And that's why the zombies in Uncharted are number three on the list. Call of Duty. Yes, we're doing Call of Duty zombies. Okay, I know these aren't the best zombies, but let's think of it back in the day. You just got Modern Warfare 2. It was one of the greatest games that had come out at this time so far. You're playing the game, and it's a decent storyline, just typical shoot, and then you see in an arcade mode, Nazi zombies. Holy freaking crap. You decide to put the two worst things ever in history and put, combine them together, and you have to fight against these things. Not to the end of the mission, but as an arcade mode. And I'm talking about 1980s arcades, where these things never ended. They just continued until you died. In fact, there actually comes a point in the game where if you go past a certain level, they just end the game for you. 
That's right, you and your people just die. Of course, it's by explosions by your hands to destroy all the zombies, but nevertheless, this game is relentless. You're going to die in this game, no matter what, that you do. They're always going to come after, and you just have to continue to survive. This truly gets the point of what survival horror is in a game that's all about shooting other soldiers in the head. So, yes, it's kind of predictable now, but at the time, nobody saw Nazi zombies coming. And that's why we decided to put it at number two. But we still got one that will really knock your socks off. And that is... Mass Effect. Wait, what zombies are in Mass Effect? I don't remember any zombies. But that's because you're the zombie, creep. In Mass Effect 2, Shepard dies. I would call this a spoiler, but if you didn't know this already, you weren't going to play the game to begin with. So in Mass Effect 2, Shepard dies in the beginning and is brought back to life. And by this definition, Shepard's a zombie. Now I can hear some of you complaining that he was just revived, kind of like a Jesus Christ. After all, he is named after Shepard. But let's think of it like this. He was dead and he was brought back to life to kill a bunch of other enemies, and if you decided to play Renegade mode on the entire game in Mass Effect 2, he is the number one dangerous zombie in the freaking galaxy. And he's a zombie that knows how to hold a gun and lead a team. That is scary. Sure, you don't fight him, but you are him. You actually play in the eyes of a zombie. You're playing a zombie going against other aliens with guns, shields, and superpowers. If there isn't any idea more scary than zombies with guns that are intelligent, then you're probably not of this earth. 